Welcome all to Bubini's Battleground, where we showcase sieges and land battles from the Total War series. Today we have a 2v2 siege in the city of Aeldon. This battle was sent in by Rabbit, and if anyone wants to see their own battles showcased, I have a link to my Discord down below. Now let us take a view at the contenders and the armies they have brought to the field. Starting us off with the attackers, we have Colchis, played by Tartanich, bringing a lot of quality Cartley Axemen. Next up, their ally Arverni, played by Nikki, stacked heavy with chosen swords. Got any food? I'm starving. On to the defending side, we have Epirus, played by Raifu, building some strong infantry and cavalry. Next up, their ally RDAI, played by Rabbit, bringing a lot of support with those Thoreos. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the city of Aeldon, I think is what it's called. We do have the capture point up here for the city of Aeldon. This is large settlement size. Attackers gotta get here, defenders gotta defend it. Nice little, kind of like, hilltop right in the center. That's kind of cool, I like that. It overlooks a lot of the city. But we have Epirus and RDAI taking on Colchis and Arverni. Uh, most of the attacking forces are kind of hiding out in the trees. As you can see, there are artillery pieces out here for the defenders. This battle was sent in by, I think, the RDAI, the RDAI player. Name is Rabbit, so thank you uh, for sending in that replay. Or, well, this replay. Thank you for sending it in. Absolutely dripped down. This is Rabbit right here. You can tell because he's masculine and it looks really cool. But, yeah. Enough chat. We've got some fighting to do. We got some Aspis Companion Cav, some Citizen Cav. Got some Hillmen pushing forward, some Siege Towers. We've got some Colchian Nobles, as well as some Carly Axemen back here. We can see some pot shots just going into the trees here. Trying to hit something, but doesn't look like they're going to be hitting much. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward it, get into some nice juicy combat, folks. So I will see you all in a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We've got our first siege equipment landing on the walls. We've got some hillmen making their way onto the settlement walls here. We have our Verney moving up. Let's actually slow this down, though, really quickly. Uh, we have a little bit of carnage that happened outside the walls. Uh, this unit of Noble Blood Cav took some artillery rounds as they were chasing off some citizen cavalry. Citizen Cav is, I think, dead at this point. They did die out right about here. Uh, the citizen Cav... We're kind of harassing the hillmen quite a bit. As you can see, there are a bunch of dead hillmen around. Uh, they actually killed off an entire hillman unit, routed that thing from the field. Noble Blood Cav came in, killed off the Citizen Cav, but also took some casualties of their own. And uh, then they just kind of sat here for a little bit and let the artillery hit them. It was kind of weird. Uh, and we have our Verney over here going for the wall. They're at 99%. I did check... They still have ammo, so I don't know why he isn't knocking this wall down, but we will see if he will knock it down. But at the moment, he has not knocked it down. But uh, let's go ahead and go normal speed here. We got just under 20 minutes, and these hillmen are already being destroyed by Pila. Oh yeah, and here come the Mercenary Axe Warriors. Yeah, at this point, no more Pila really needs to go into those guys. I mean, we've got Colchian Nobles here, as well as Cartley Axemen now making their way onto the walls. Got Hillmen breaking from the field. Three standard stuff. Hillmen are not going to really hold long. They're just kind of there to soak up ammunition. Kind of weaken and tire out the front line a little bit. But Cartley Axemen are engaged here with some mercenary Celtic warriors of RDAI. RDAI does have a lot of Illyrian Thoreos here. Going to prove quite difficult for Colchis to get through if they're not able to get into the back line there and silence these Pila throws. As you can see right here, Carly Axman getting shot shield side. But still getting shot in the side by all that Pila. So far, the shields are holding up quite well, but sooner or later, those shields are going to break through and that that's just going to be full damage going into those guys. Fulci and Nobles also charging in. A lot of mercenary axe warriors here. And Celtic warriors holding the front line for RDAI. Back over here, Arverni has also charged up some Celtic warriors onto the walls. They are engaged with the Samnite warriors and some Illyrian levies. Illyrian levies are not going to hold long in this fight. 
Celtic Warriors are the superior unit here. They're also being shot by some arrow fire. Sam Knight's taking some sword side shots as well. A little bit front, maybe. Maybe a little front. Kind of a mix. Yeah, you can see they're kind of got all their archers back there, kind of getting a little bit of mixed shots in there. But the levies have routed from the field. We have more levies charging in, trying to stop some chosen swordsmen. Chosen swordsmen against the levies. The levies are going to stand no chance. More Celtic warriors charging in here. Larian Levy is going to meet them. They will also meet the same fate. Illyrian levies, man. They're pretty much like Hillman. They're just trash. Fodder units. Let them throw their pila. Let them take some freaking hits for the big guys. And that's it. Let them take the charge and then send in your heavier infantry right behind them. Yeah, see the mercenary Sam Knights now engaged. But they're now also being shot sword side by the archers. A lot of skirmisher fire coming in there. Chosen Sword starting to cut through these levies. They have actually surprisingly taken 15 losses. We do have some Rhodian Slingers up here. We have some Thoreos as well. Um, we have, I think, two or three units of Rhodian Slingers. Me, personally, I would have taken probably three Cretan Archers instead, just because this position on the hill up here, you can very easily fire up and over. Especially right here, you can fire over the buildings. Little more helpful than the Slingers. Yes, the Slingers do have more ammo, and the Rhodian Slingers are pretty good. But it's just the ability to fire over this building is going to make a huge difference. But that first wave of Cartleys, the first wave of Colchian troops in general being mel melted. I'm going to say met and melted at the same time. Pretty much the same words. They are going to be melted as they meet a roadblock. Just a frickin' brick wall. RDAI hitting them with the brick wall. These units are stuck up on the walls here. As you can see, they are elevated, so that is going to give some great shots to those Slingers, those Illyrian Marines as well. They're going to have some excellent shots firing over the heads of their allies here. Another unit of Illyrian Thoreos moving up. Ooh, where are they? Oh, they're actually going to be targeting this unit there. I don't know about that angle. That angle looks a little poopy. I would definitely fire into this. Um, pro, pro strat here. Um, if you're on the walls like that, if you actually give an order, like a move order to like sit like that, right? Like give a move order off the wall, your guys will actually come down. And then you give them the attack order, then they'll actually get off the wall. If you just give them an attack order, they're going to stand up here. And only a small portion of them will actually be down here fighting. And they'll leave themselves open for for shots, and you, you definitely don't want that happening. Wait, what happened here? What? No way. The Chosen Swordsmen. 70 men left in the unit. They will rout from the field as they're getting hit by some Pila there from Epirus. Routing unit. The Illyrian Levies will beat them back. Ah, okay. Thoreos have some kills on him here. That might have been the, the battle turning tide there. The turning of the tide. But we got some Celtic warriors also routing from the field. A new fresh unit of Chosen Swords making their way into the settlement. And we even have a unit of Eckhartley Axemen moving around over here. Eastern Archer is going to be forced back as the Rhodian Slingers on the walls. Got the quick reload. Gonna force those guys back. Eastern Archer is going to reposition here. Have the Gallic Hunters back here as well. And Arverni still has not knocked down this wall. That's, that's huge because his troops have to trickle in off these siege towers instead of just sending the full unit. You know, if you knock down this wall, you can send in the full unit. And I don't think he's fired any round. Yeah, he's got he's got ammo. He's got ammo. What are you doing? Ballista unit running away. That is the first time I've ever seen a ballista crew run away with full ammo on the ballista and say, nah, we don't need that. All right, Vernon, what are you doing? Knock the wall down. Because if you knock the wall down right here, you cut through this tiny little Sam Knight, which actually is being shot by some archers back there, the Gallic Hunters. Now you just stream in all of your infantry. Send two units out this way, send four or five units that way. You are now into the defense instead of trying to be held at these little points where you've got your siege equipment lined up. But I mean, archer fire, I guess the sword side shots, I guess is what they're looking for. But you can still get that right there. We got some fresh Chosens in here fighting the Sam Knights. Sam Knights still holding on, 111 kills. 
We've got some more Chosen Swords here fighting some Thoreos underneath the Arrow Tower. So far, a pretty solid defense by the defenders here, Epirus and R RDAI. They are against some pretty superior infantry, I would say. Chosen Swords far superior than RDAI's standard mid and low tier units. I mean, they do have the Noble Hoplites, which are pretty strong. And Epirus does have the Sam Knights, but I mean, partly Axemen should be able to cut right through those Sam Knights, especially with all that armor-piercing damage. And just the Archer superiority, you're going against basically six units of Slingers, seven units of Slingers. Definitely be able to get through there. But the Slingers, once again, getting onto the wall is going to force back those Eastern Archers. Colchis. The General is engaged. The Colchian Nobles are in the fight. We got some tattered Cartley Axemen as a bodyguard in there. And I think we've got... What else we got? We got another unit of Cartley Axemen now making their way onto the walls. This guy's still walking around, figuring out what he wants to do with his life. And then we got a lot of Chosens back here. I mean, this is still a little in favor of the attackers, I think. It might be by a balanced power, a little bit of favor of the attackers. I mean, I can see why the Archer Superiority just better overall quality of troops when you take into account Illyrian Marines and Illyrian Thoreos are not that good in melee combat. They can be decent if you cycle charge them but most of their killing power does come from the Pila. As you can see we got the Slingers up here. We've got the Thoreos firing down to the backsides of those Chosen Swords. They're going to back off from the Sam Knights. They're going to take a load of Pila to the back there. Lose about 20 men from that Illyrian Levy. 18 to be exact. Chosen Swords are going to constrict on that Thoreos. And a fresh unit of Chosens are going to fight the Illyrian Levies. Archer Fire are going to come in, try and support Sword Side. For these Illyrian Levies, here comes the Archer Fire. But the units are so spaced out. Everybody's spaced out. You can't tell if you're going to hit your own guys or the Chosen Swords. But those Levies are starting to break. We've got three Chosen Swords that are free to engage. I would say send two up this way. Send one into that, send one right here. One to cut through the Thoreos, one to cut through the Sam Knights, and then get the rest into the settlement and get these guys to just spread out. Because with Arverni now breaking through like that, the entire defensive line is now in trouble. These units are starting to all get surrounded. They have taken their casualties. They've taken their losses. They're starting to hurt. I mean, they have done some damage, but they're just slowly whittling down. 168 kills on that Axe Warrior, 92 on that Illyrian Thoreos. We got Illyrian Marines moving up as well. Colchis General, almost almost half the unit left. But we got a fresh Cartley Axeman battle rhythm going up, trying to help out the General. Archers lining up, getting some shots in. Got a Cartley Axeman here that have now joined the fight, finally. Engaging the Illyrian Marines. We've got more Illyrian Marines in the back line here. Throwing Pila at the sides of them. Yeah, the Illyrian Marines will get cut down here, but the Cartleys, they're taking a lot of shots. They're going to charge past those Marines, try and get into these guys, silence their shots. We have more levies back here. 112 kills on that levy unit. Pretty crazy. Oh, and hold up. We've got some Aspis Companion Cavalry. Aspis Companion Cavalry. They have made their ways outside the walls. And they see the damn arches. We got the noble blood cab over there. They're not even they're not even looking. Alright, let's see. How good is this? Let's watch this kill count. Oh my gosh. 70 kills immediately off the charge, followed up with another 30. Wow, both archer units shattering. Now here comes the noble blood cab. Honestly, I wouldn't even send this in. Aspis Companion Cav are armed with a sword. These guys are armed with a spear. They do have the bonus versus large, but Aspis Companion Cav, dude, they have way more melee attack than these guys. Plus, the unit is much healthier. I would not charge in here. Oh, the Noble Cav. Oh, no, the Noble Cav. Noble Blood Cav. Didn't even get a single kill off that charge. Losing decisively. Yeah, Aspis Companion Cav, dude, they, you need some heavy spearmen to take those guys out. Not not Levy Freeman. Not even Spear Brothers. You need, like, Spear Wall. You need Chosen Spearmen. You need some heavy spear units to take out Aspis Companion Cav or even some Pikemen or something like that. But they have to be outnumbered. 
Maybe like two noble horse can probably take them on as well. But Aspis Companion Cab, bro, they are strong. And look at all that health. 105 health, 95 armor, 71 melee attack. They have 165 kills already, and they are killing that noble blood calf. And they're going to pull off there. 168 kills, they're going to pull away. But back over here, it looks like the defenders have salvaged somewhat of a battle line here. Able to reform right here and here as well. Killing that Cartley Axeman that just kind of got away from Colchis there. I don't know if that was the move to put that right there. You probably could have just reinforced your battle line here. Your general is fighting still with the Cartley Axeman. They are starting to cut through. We have another unit, Chosen Swordsman, on the walls here. Fresh unit helping out, fighting off RDAI. AI. But over here, these Chosen Swordsmen are getting shot in the back. They're getting shot in the back by the Slave Slingers as they engage some Illyrian Noble Hoplites. We even have some more Marines and more Slingers and Archers over here getting some good shots on those swords. Back over here, we've got Levy Freeman and a Chosen Swordsman taking on a Thoreos, two Thoreos, and a Noble Hoplite. They are trying to pull back and reform. Thoreos want to get some nice shots in on that Chosen Sword. They're going to march forward a little bit. They might be out of ammo now. 98 kills with just the Pila. That's pretty solid. Or were they engaged in melee? They might have been engaged in melee too, but here comes the Thoreos. 26 charge bonus. They're not too bad. Not too shabby. They're going to flank the Chosen Swords, who have flanked the other Thoreos. Attackers could definitely get some support over here. This would be some sword side shots. I would not target the Noble Hoplites. I would kind of just ignore them. But I would definitely target the Thoreos. They are more lightly armored than those Hoplites. I, I would say the Hoplites need to be shot with, like, Pila or something. But these archers are in the settlement now. They are getting shot at by the Slingers and Cretan archers back there. They are trying to return fire, but they're just losing numbers fast. I mean, the attackers... Do have somewhat of a bonus here taking on these guys as most of the slingers and archers are just stacked on top of each other so they're not getting the most effective shots off but there is just more of them overall firing into them and they're just whittling down their numbers these frontline units starting to break chosen swords cartley axemen trying to clean up units here we got some levy freeman getting onto the walls here comes some celtic some celtic warriors Oh, they're actually going to do some damage to that Cartley Axeman. We've got this Cartley Axeman in shield wall. Might have been trying to get some Pila in there. Oh, but look at these Illyrian Marines. They're going to get back shots into the Chosen Swordsmen who have been engaged by Sam Knights on the opposing side. Oh, boy. Are they going to do another volley? I really hope they do. Yes, here comes another volley. Oh, snap. That's juicy. That is juicy. See, the problem with this attack is you are too close to these units here. If you're attacking this direction, you got to be hitting it from here. If you start attacking from here, you're going to have exactly what's happening right here. You're going to get shot in the back by anything that's sitting right over there. And you also need to make more of an effort to attack this hill. Because they can just sit archers up here and also shoot you sword side. Should you be pushing in this way. No. You got to make it happen. I mean, the balance of power now shifting in favor of the defenders, and I gotta say, I mean, it looks like it. I mean, we've got some noble hoplites, some Illyrian marines over here. Yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of noble hoplites and a lot of marines still on the battlefield here. We even have the royal peltists and the Samnites. And I mean, it, I don't know, it, there's just nothing left of Colchis, really. His general, half a unit. He's down to, like, one Carly Axeman. And that one's starting to lose. Arverni's got three chosen swords. One of them's pretty beat up, and then he's got his general unit. His archers still might have ammo, and then he's got his levy freeman. But, I mean, the, the attackers... you got to be careful here, because the defenders, if they're smart, these RDAI slingers, they will just unload into Coltress's general here and take out a general. The general's not already dead. 
could actually just start dumping ammo on the Oathsworn. That wouldn't be too bad either, as that seems to be the main threat that's left on this battlefield. But they are doing some shots into the backs of the Chosen Swords. Not a bad option. Not a bad option at all. Oh, hold up, though. We've got the Illyrian Marines charging down the hill, supporting the Sam Knights. Those Chosen Swords are going to break with 49 men left in the unit. Attackers are going to start having their general here, the Elsworn, going to get shot at. They start getting front dumped by Slingers. They do have this unit of Levy Freeman that is now available to get into the fight. But here comes the Noble Hoplites. This is not going to end well. Levy Freeman. It is spear versus spear, but these are some very elite spears. They are going to get some point blank Pila shots, but it's not going to be enough. The attackers are now being flanked. All of their troops being flanked. Oh, we even have some noble hoplites that have broken through. They are routing the ballista crew and getting into the levy freemen, the archers back here. They still have ammo, but they're not firing. If you see this, if you see that you're breaking, you might as well just start firing. Just start dumping ammo into units, man. Come on. Chosen swordsmen up here in shield wall starting to break as well. They are on the downhill slope. Fighting a much superior unit. Yeah, that's not going to end well there. That unit might break soon. Oh, Sworn here are engaged in the fight. Colchis' general still alive. Still alive as he takes on these Illyrian Marines. But they are starting to get shot in the back. Can we see the general? I can't tell. I have no idea, but the general is now surrounded. And that's Colchis' last unit as well, so no surprise there. But dude, just look at the mass carnage. This has just been a well-contained fight. The defenders giving very little ground to the attackers, holding at the walls. Now we have the archers unloading into the defending archers and slingers here. These slingers, dude. I mean, 177, 163, they definitely got their value. I mean, shoot. Slingers... Archers probably would have been better, but still, the Slingers performed. I can't say anything about that. The Slingers definitely performed. I am just a little sad we haven't seen more Aspis Companion Cav action. I mean, it was pretty juicy getting into all those Archers, but I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more Companion Cav. But Epirus' troops getting a little withered down here. Larian Marines just trying to hold the General in place. Here comes the full encirclement. This is the final unit left, 17 seconds. And it does not look like it'll go in favor of the attackers. Defenders look like they will hold them at the walls with a pretty crushing defeat for the attackers. But a well-contained victory for the defenders. That was absolutely phenomenal. I gotta say, the cav work outside was juicy. The defense on the inside even juicier. I mean, you just, you kind of had like the U-shape hold, and then you had the Illyrian Marines all around the outside. You had the low tiers up front, holding them in place, the Marines in the back, just dumping ammo into the sides of everything that made their way up. You can see just all the carnage from the first wave. I mean, Arverni definitely did do probably a bulk of the work getting in here. I'm surprised he didn't knock that wall down, but he had an opportunity. If he knocked that wall down and was able to funnel in all those chosen swords with a full unit instead of like partially funneling in units on the siege towers, probably would have been behind all of these lines a lot sooner. Probably would have saved a lot of infantry. But probably could have went a different way. But we all make mistakes in the heat of passion, in the heat of battle. But that was a great fight. Well-contained defense. Let's go ahead and look at these end battle results. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with the defenders here. We have Raifu playing Epirus. We have Rabbit playing RDAI. Rabbit did send in the replay. Thank you, sir, once again for sending in the replay. And then on the attack, we have, I think that's pronounced Tartanage. I'm not going to pronounce the second part. I've already looked at that name. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to call him Tartanage. I think that's probably not even being pronounced right either. I, I do apologize. They are playing Colchis. Then we have Nikki playing Arverni.
I do greatly appreciate you guys coming and checking out the channel today. If you enjoy these siege battles, please consider subscribing to the channel as I release new content for Total War every week. But we are on the road to 1,000 subs. We are less than 70 away. And upon our goal, we will do the 24-hour stream where I will play with all of you wonderful viewers. But that's all I have for you guys today, and I will catch you all later.